Good afternoon. So when Father JP uh, asked me to give a testimonial about my call to motherhood, I quickly said, oh, sure. I'd be very happy to do that. And then I thought, Father JP's first choice must have said no. Because <laughs> I know many of you women here can speak much more gracefully about motherhood, a place where you can come from from more experience than I, more wisdom than I ever could. Um, but alas, you are all stuck listening to me, okay? To be perfectly honest, for most of my life, I didn't think I wanted to be a mother. I remember when I was 10 years old, I told, I told my own mom, I'm going to be the first female president of the United States or a brain surgeon, either one, okay? My career ambitions changed in college, and I wanted to be a history professor. Regardless, I knew I'd be committing myself to years of schooling and a competitive job market. Who had time to think about marriage and children? But what I did know, and I knew God was calling me to do, was I really wanted a dog. So, okay. Flash forward. When my husband Adam and I got married five and a half years ago, we both agreed that we were not in any rush, <laughs> hi Isaac, um, to have any children. My dissertation would take another three years to complete, and for us, the right time for a child would be after I secured my full-time tenure-track history professorship. Right? Unfortunately, though, after my first year after graduation, um, I was unable to snag that full-time gig. But the funny thing is, God speaks whenever we are not really listening sometimes. God spoke to me through a whisper, maybe through a breeze. I think it was a February day, um, that maybe it was time to start thinking about a baby. But coincidentally or not, I had just turned 31, and I could hear my biological clock ticking, tick-tock, time to get started, maybe, who knows. I believe, though, that God spoke to me at the most opportune time because it turns out that the road to motherhood was bumpy. I had issues with infertility and a miscarriage that left me feeling deeply betrayed by my body. Later, when Adam and I learned we were expecting a baby for the second time, we were cautiously optimistic. The first 17 weeks were, to be very honest, awful. Um, I was constantly sick. I found um, I was clinging to the toilet frequently. And, but, but God's funny. He, he reassures me every time I was vomiting. This child is strong. This child is a fighter. Also, good luck with your pregnancy. Okay. Adam and I just celebrated our son Isaac's first birthday last weekend. And like millions of women would testify, motherhood is an emotional roller coaster. Some of you know that Isaac's first week of life was difficult. Memories of that week are seared into my brain, a constant reminder of what is most important in my life. A lot of dark thoughts swirled through my mind that week, but what brought us constantly to the light was our faith in God, the skills of Isaac's medical team, the prayers and support from our family, and especially from members of this community. You pulled us through that dark time. I learned early on, though, that God does not necessarily intend for us to go through parenthood alone, that it is good to rely on others when you need help. Sorry. Isaac made a full recovery. When you look at him today, he's bright-eyed and curious, mischievous. He's loud. I tell him every day that the San Diego Opera won't take him until he gets that pitch and tone thing under control. <laughs> but when we realized Isaac would be okay, the more typical stresses and joys of parenting begin, begun to take over our lives. Sleepless nights, why are you crying? Is it diaper, is it you're gassy, who knows, right? These days, though, as a full-time working mom, 
I occasionally feel the pangs of guilt, wondering if Isaac will resent me one day for having a career outside of the home. Yet, as I converse with other women, I come to believe that God does not intend motherhood to be a one-size-fit-all vocation, because some mothers are blessed to work outside the home, others are blessed to stay at home, just as some mothers conceive their children after meticulous planning, while others appear on that TLC show, I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> okay. And yet there are even more who don't have biological children, but are still mothers in their own right. I was called by God to have two vocations. I love my job as a history professor, and I love being a wife and mom. I truly believe that God has given me just enough strength and surrounded me with just enough loving support to make everything work out. But no matter where we are in life, when we accept the call to motherhood, we become invested in nurturing and guiding and teaching our children in hopes that one day they will grow to be a conscientious, self-possessed, intelligent, and loving medical doctor, concert pianist, tennis Grand Slam champion, and follower of Jesus. You hear me, son? Okay. <laughs> what is not often said, though, is how motherhood is a commitment to our own spiritual and emotional growth as women. As I joke with my students, that they can thank my son for my newfound patience with them when they don't turn in their assignments on time. Right. Much seriously, though, motherhood has been and is still one of the most challenging vocations of my life, of many women out there. But it is one of these callings that grows even more rewarding and more fulfilling as time passes by. Motherhood might not be for everyone. Only you know in your heart whether it is. But I know for myself, I am deeply thankful. I was in a listening mood when God whispered into my ear to open up my heart to the possibility of Isaac's existence. Isaac has filled my heart with so many rich and complex emotions that I cannot even fathom life on this planet without him. And so Mother's Day you know, is a time where we all reflect on the blessings we do have in our life as women, as men, as children of somebody out there, perhaps as parents. And we take stock of all the blessings we have. We thank God for everything we have. Because honestly, we wouldn't even be here today if it weren't for our moms. Somebody had to give birth to us, right? <laughs> and so today I, I give my testimony. But so many of you have so many other stories to share, uh, much more complex, much more rich than mine. Um, but I, I am very honored that Father JP asked me to share my testimony. Um, yes, hi, son. I can hear him all the time, <laughs> even when he's not there. <laughs> and so perhaps if you are a woman like myself, career-driven, thinking, oh, there's no room for a child, perhaps one day God will whisper to you, say, hey, nudge, nudge, right? If you do take on the call of motherhood, it will be one of the most rewarding experiences of your life. Thank you, and happy Mother's Day.